All right, well, this week is officially Cybersecurity Week in China. It's the second time that the country has made an official effort to raise awareness about the big increase in cyber attacks and to educate Internet users about how to better protect themselves. And for more on China's cybersecurity issues, I'm joined by Darren Guccione. He is the CEO of Keeper Security. Darren, good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Darren, there have been a series of cybersecurity breaches in China recently with some very big companies. Just last week, we had Alipay, China's largest online payment platform, having some issues, although reportedly due to an optical fiber glitch. And Ctrip.com, China's biggest online travel agent, had both its website and its mobile platforms go down due to a service outage problem. Overall, Darren, how do Chinese internet companies or websites rank in terms of internet security? I think that uh, most of the sites, whether it's globally, whether it's China, United States, or even in Europe, I think that the problem is pervasive. And I wouldn't say that they rank better or worse. I think that we have a global dilemma and we have a serious cybersecurity issue that we have to address. All right, we have a global dilemma, we have an issue. So Darren, what can companies do to increase their cyber safety? I think one thing is you want to make sure that the websites um, practice what we call perfect forward secrecy. It's a, a high level of encryption and a, a series of protocols and internal controls that really companies that have an online presence need to adapt. It's really important. All right. Well, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, they conducted a survey and uh, they called it the Chinese Netizen Cybersecurity Report. And it found that 83% of people using public Wi-Fi for transactions are, in fact, vulnerable to attacks by hackers. Why, Darren, are Wi-Fi spots that dangerous? And, and what should we be mindful of? Yeah, the problem is that most public Wi-Fi networks don't practice strong layers of encryption or aren't encrypted at all. So consumers and users alike have to be very aware of the networks that they're logging into. So for example, if you're in an airport and you're logging into a public Wi-Fi, it's always best to utilize a VPN and a secure connection that's encrypted using HTTPS connections um, when you're online. It's really important to be aware of that. Well, I want to focus a little bit on passwords because that same Chinese netizen cybersecurity report, which in fact surveyed over a quarter of a million people, found that 81% of people seldom change their passwords. About 76% use the same password for multiple online accounts. Personally, I'm guilty as charged. 44% use obvious things like their birthdays. And about 16% use those common easy passwords like 1234. How crucial are passwords? Do hackers literally try and crack passwords, or do they use more sophisticated methods? Passwords are 75% of the reason why all hacks occur. So weak passwords are a huge problem. And as you said before, you know, using like the letters of your name or 12345 or password 1234, unfortunately, those are the most common passwords used today. So we always, you know, um, basically recommend the use of a password manager. And, and hackers are literally sitting there trying to figure out people's passwords. Yes, I mean, a lot of it is basically a man-in-the-middle attack, which is what they call it, or a brute force attack. And they have programs that are put in place to basically utilize and randomize various passwords, starting with the most common passwords first. And they replicate that over and over again at a very high speed, and they use it to gain access into networks. But they start with a series of studies that say, okay, these are the most common passwords, or these are the passwords that we were able to locate by breaching a separate section of a network. And we'll say that most people, at least three-fourths or 75 percent of all of us use the same password on multiple sites, which is very dangerous. So that opens well, us up to breaches. Well, let's talk about biometrics then. Let's talk about biometrics. Sure. The biometrics password safer, for example, your, your thumbprint or maybe a retina scan. And at what point are these going to become even more and more mainstream? Yeah, this is really becoming popular, and it's a big thing that our company focuses on. Uh, the fingerprint and the retina are the two most popular today, and you're going to see a lot more mobile devices, smartphones, and even tablets supporting this type of biometric technology. 
Let's quickly talk about the size of this market, Darren. It's expanding, estimated to be around $71 billion in 2014. What are the opportunities yep. here, both in, in China and generally? This is the biggest thing, uh, really, since the Internet of Things. This will be the largest uh, industry out there. It will be, you know, over 70 billion. It's growing. It will double within the next four to five years to over 150 billion. The Internet of Things and, and also cloud computing, all of those three factors um, really feed each other, and we're going to see massive um, focus on the cybersecurity industry. All right. Thank you so much for your insight. We're going to have to leave it there. Darren Guccione, CEO of Keeper Security.